Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, May 12. The Jamaican economy has received yet another stamp of approval from the International Monetary Fund IMF with the latest review showing that government's policies remain effective. At a press conference Tuesday, the IMF mission to Jamaica shared expert opinion on how the economy performed in the January to March quarter. Andrea Chisholm has details. The new head of the IMF mission to Jamaica, Dr. Uma Ramakrishnan, says Jamaica has passed the eighth IMF test and is poised to receive another 40 million US dollars from the multilateral agency. All quantitative targets for the January to March 2015 period were met, excepting the primary balance target which was missed by about $4.1 billion due to lower than anticipated revenues to government. The lower revenue reflects lower inflation and the impact of drought and other external shocks to growth. Nevertheless, primary surplus is still estimated at 7.5% of GDP and that is the central fiscal anchor of the program. In the meantime, Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips has pointed to improvements in the economy. Inflation for the last fiscal year was 4%, the lowest in 48 years. Jamaica's current account deficit fell from 13.4% in 2012 to 5.9% at the end of the last fiscal year. For the 2015-16 year, the deficit is expected, the current account deficit out of our balance of payments is expected to narrow further to 2.4% of GDP. Our progress thus far is, in our view, commendable by any standard. And while we have successfully navigated the first two years, we still have much to accomplish. For GIS News, I'm Andrea Chisholm. The Ministry of Agriculture is estimating about $200 million in losses as a result of massive bushfires in the hills of Mavis Bank, St. Andrew. State Minister Luther Buchanan toured fire-ravaged areas on Monday where over 500 acres of land and properties were destroyed. He said it would cost about $100 million to get new coffee plants going. The coffee board indicated to me that their estimate would have been about $100 million uh, in damages and Fortunately, they indicated that 80% of the coffee was reaped before and that 20% burnt. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority will be carrying out a more comprehensive assessment and the ministry will also be beefing up its public education campaign to discourage farmers from using the slash and burn method of clearing land. In the meantime, persons whose homes were destroyed by the fire received mattresses and Minister Buchanan assured them that government was working to bring stability back to their lives. The Ministry of Housing has committed to seeing to the reconstruction of homes that have been damaged through food for the poor. So the government has been extending both hands, its full arms, I mean, through a multi-sector approach in terms of how we deal with the people. The Bank of Jamaica will be holding talks with members of the Jamaica Cooperative Credit Union League on proposals to change and finalize the latest draft of regulations to govern credit unions. To address critical issues such as omissions, codify certain sound practices within the sector, and to update and or standardize certain key definitions and terms in accordance with local and international standards. The Minister with Responsibility for the Public Service was speaking at the official opening of Educom Cooperative Credit Union, a merger of A Squared, M Squared and the UWI Credit Unions. He said given recent changes to the financial environment, both locally and overseas, rules governing the operations of credit unions had to be amended. The credit union movement cannot escape these realities. If we do not have an appropriate and acceptable regulatory framework, then Jamaica's financial system as a whole is going to face challenges. As at December 2014, the asset base of credit unions in Jamaica was $82 billion, representing 7% of the total assets held by deposit-taking institutions. Over 15,000 young people are expected to benefit from the National Youth Service NYS this fiscal year following a $22.6 million increase in the entity's budget. The NYS budget of $344.6 million will help to develop new programs as well as expand its summer work, volunteer and entrepreneurship programs among others. 
Through a partnership with the 4-H clubs across the island, the NYS will also be rolling out its Rural Youth Empowerment Programme to help entrepreneurs. Portfolio Minister Lisa Hanna told Parliament recently that NYS participants would also work more closely with parliamentarians during the fiscal year. I've tasked the NYS to work closer to the members of Parliament, to come to you personally and design training programmes with you, because I know you have different cadres that our programmes can, can, can help you with and to see how we can also utilize our resources along with yours to push better programs to give you a more individualized personal attention and touch. And finally, over 300 delegates from the Caribbean and the wider global community will meet this week in Montego Bay for the second International Conference on Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, STEM, and Technical and Vocational Education and Training, TVET. The conference will run from May 13 to 15 and will be held under the theme STEM Education in TVET, Imperative to National and Regional Development. At a recent GIS Think Tank Planning Committee Chairman, Dr. Disraeli Hutton underscored the importance of TVET to national development. If we are going to be able to, to raise the productivity of um, the country, the prosperity of our people, we have to significantly um, find no, new ways and STEM is really an opportunity that we are seeking to exploit. Senior Director for TVET Development and Support Systems at the Heart Trust NTA, Dr. Marcia Rowe Amand, said the conference would also seek to strengthen TVET in Jamaica and the region. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.